a great pleasure to be here with my sister and friend and a, fa a fellow uh, detoxification specialist. And we, uh, what we focus on is regenerative healing. And what we're going to be sharing here today is the power of regenerative healing and what does it really mean. And as regenerative healing specialists, we help people and ourselves to purify the body and the mind by using natural laws, really just the natural principles of life, connecting back to nature, and utilizing methods such as juice feasting, such as fasting, uh, fruits, which we're going to be talking talking about, which is the natural food for the human species and the human organism, and why, and what healing really is, and how come purification, the purification of the body, is a doorway to your ultimate liberation, that what we do is so much more than just even just physical health or losing weight or ridding yourself from any kind of diseases or discomforts. Like, yes, those are all things that are going to come along the way. However, the path of healing and the path of purification goes so much deeper and excavates so much of the unconscious and the, the shadows and the debris really that we hold within our physical body, but then also our mental body and our emotions and how come it's vital and absolutely crucial to go through the path of purification to really purify the body if you want to be truly free so it is the path of purification that leads to liberation that brings about freedom of the body and realizing that well the soul and the spirit resides within this body and so in order to embody our divinity in order to embody the light of our soul which is the truth of who we are the yeah. physical body must be addressed <laughs> and and how true freedom you know the, the this conference is about metamorphosis and so as humans on this planet if we are to elevate if we are to change we have to change who we are fundamentally. And it comes down to this path of initiation. And when somebody partakes in something like juice fasting, where they're doing no solid food, so maybe to introduce what juice fasting is first and foremost as a modality that will be used to help us um, undergo this metamorphosis of being a human being and learning our true potential. Um, you know, there's no fiber in what you're taking in an extended period of time where it's just pure liquid nutrition. Um, the insoluble fiber is removed and there's this massive absorption of nutrients that are flooding our bodily fluids, delivering, you know, the nutrition throughout the body. And during that path of, or during that time of, of juicing, a person is now not going to be able to rely on what they might have been addicted to or have been using in the past as a means to suppress emotions or to suppress a potential in their body. Is there anything you want to comment on that as, um, as what you see in individuals going on, you know, a juicing cleanse? through my own experience and working with clients uh yeah you go into it perhaps from from a from a particular door of wanting to cleanse the body or whatever the health issue might be you know and then along the way you realize that it's so much more than just that and like you said in moments of discomfort or moments of maybe intense emotions or whatnot there's no okay I'm, I'm I'm not gonna go to the food so when you are in that kind of process life invites you to sit 
with what is and to start having an awareness like this is this is how we start freeing ourselves is by actually realizing that something has power over us and food all food is a drug and it's the biggest drug out there and it's the most acceptable it's really is a drug and that's the first step if you want to liberate yourself is to first realize i'm addict i'm an addict like i am i'm 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 an addict or i actually yeah i use food as a way to suppress or to numb and it doesn't matter what the food is the denser it is the heavier it is the most the more detrimental perhaps however though food and just even the act of eating right like the solid food so when you remove that you 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 start having that awareness of oh oh okay i don't have this food now to go into so i must actually deal with what's inside and that's how we start liberating ourselves and and i think many people don't understand just how energetically demanding the process of digesting the food is so that when people start eating all of their bodily energy is going into you know secreting the digestive enzymes breaking down the food absorbing those nutrients and in the heavier the food the more energy it takes so when you lighten the load less energy is involved when you completely remove the fiber you know no energy is involved in digestion all you're doing is absorbing and then you can get to the point of like you said the liberation so talking more about this liberation um and why it's important for people on the path of a of a truth seeking um you know philosophy of of, you know looking at the problems in the world you know why is it why should the everyday person just embark on a juice cleanse you know why is that important you know if you don't have something that you're trying to heal is this a path of initiation that most people should embrace because it is a a moment of solitude or a moment of allowing the body to to deeply um rest and heal anything you would like to comment on that there's a lot i can comment on that well number one is that there's there's no shoulds in the sense of would that bring world peace like next week if if every person go or a majority of people in, on, on this planet goes on it's not even about the juicing it's just like stop the consumption or start paying attention to what you're consuming then yes we'll have world peace like next week so uh, however though there is such a thing regarding a soul path an individual path and every person just signed up for something else you know so and maybe it's not this lifetime that they're gonna purify their body so I don't really have like a black and white answer to that. And yes, like it would be lovely if every individual would embark on on some sort of a purification journey at some point in their lives, because that's going to help all of us as humans on this planet. <clears throat> now, it doesn't have to be a salt for vacation, but there is power to that. There's no doubt about it. And let's start with the the understanding that when your body is full of obstructions and when it's acidic and when your de- when your colon your gi tract is filthy and is constantly releasing toxins throughout the body these toxins um, they pollute the blood they affect the brain they affect the glands the endocrine system which is our connection to the chakras to the energy centers so the physical body is no separate is, is not a separate thing from our energy body. We've got several bodies and they all interact and work together. And so when we talk about the human potential, how can we actually embody, first of all, and then fulfill our true human potential if we are limited because our body is filled with obstructions to various degrees? And when our brain is not functioning fully, and when there's a constant seeping of toxicity into the blood, which is the water of life, this is like 
the water in our body is 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 the blood you know it's like the rivers are polluted on the planet because it's just in the oceans because it's just a reflection of what's going on inside people's bodies like the world is merely a reflection it's a mirror so we can do all the great things out there uh, cleaning the oceans cleaning the rivers cleaning the beaches but we're not addressing the root cause which is the cells of this human organisms which is each and every human continue to pollute their own body and their own blood and therefore we see the reflection so that's that's one aspect then we look at the amount of not just trash that you eliminate during a, a salted vacation out of your digestive tract which is like it's a it's mind blowing like i have every single client that is like they can they can't believe it like after 70 days 80 days on nothing but juice and what comes out the other end is nothing but mind boggling nothing but mind boggling then when we talk about freedom when we talk about sovereignty you're not fully free and you're not fully sovereign if there are microorganisms in your body, aka parasites and fungus and bacteria that are not supposed to be there, controlling your body, controlling what you put in your mouth, what you want to put in your mouth, and your thoughts and your emotions. The implications of having colonies of parasites and funguses in your body go way, way, way beyond what most people can even comprehend what I have been learning myself and been like, oh my God, when you start seeing how much they control what it is that you want, what it is that you crave, what it is that you think, what it is that you feel, and how you even view yourself, because these creatures also feed on low vibrational emotions. So they want you to stay depressed. They want you to stay desperate. They want you to stay hopeless. They want you to stay in fear because just like parasites want particular foods, they also want particular vibrational states. That is so true. So, and it is all vibration. Yes. Yes. The last thing parasites want or any microorganisms that basically you are the host, you're the host. They want you to stay their host. They want to stay alive just like you want to stay alive. They don't want you to fulfill your full potential, which is light. This is the truth of our being. If you want to talk about truth and our true potential is that we are, our DNA is made of light. We are light beings. And so juice feasting and the fruits and the herbs, the fasting, the things that we utilize, these are all steps. These are all ways in which or tools that we utilize to bring us back to our natural state which is light this physical form is is dense because it's it's made out of light that manifests itself in a more dense form but it's our responsibility to come back to the truth of who we are and awaken our light dna that's that's exactly what it is and and i think many people don't know the true nature of dna in the first place it is an antenna a light source it can emit light i mean there there has been um, many individuals that have talked about the light bodies and 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 so when you mentioned going back a little bit to you know the how each human is a reflection of what's going on on this planet, right? Um, so if we look at like, you know, our own human body, and so we have cells in our human body that make up organs and organs that make up the whole organism. If one cell goes awry, if one cell becomes sick and damaged um, because of a variety of reasons, whatever dis-ease has been embedded in that cell, um, and it starts to proliferate and take over, it can essentially eventually kill the whole organism. So that's kind of a reflection of each human on this planet and why it's important that each human takes personal responsibility because we, one human, can theoretically release enough of a negative effect that it can affect many others and and cause kind of a situation of where we are today right so 
today we have such of a low consciousness on this planet. And so there is this, I think, important message we're trying to maybe share that each and every individual human has the personal responsibility to clean their house, to cleanse their vessel so that they don't spread this diseased energy. Right. No, I, I really appreciate that you brought up the self-responsibility because it, it boils down to that. In my, in my view, it has to start at home. Uh, the mantra that I live by is to be the change, to be the shift that you wish to see in the world. And how are we going to see the shifts and the change that we want to see in the world when we keep what we, the way we treat our body, the way we view ourselves is the way that we actually treat the planet. There's a correlation there. Exactly. I and the self the self responsibility also it, it it's a byproduct or it goes hand in hand with actually realizing like the self realization of who you truly are, and what is this body? Because also there's a this conception in, in many of the spiritual circles that oh we are so much more than just this body, correct? But that doesn't mean that this body is a piece of crap and to be used as a garbage can. Right. Because this body is, is the vehicle of the soul, is the vehicle of, of the soul that you, that you are. And, and you chose this vehicle and, and it's God. It's God manifesting in a human form and how divine design it is. It, it's, it, it's, it's a piece of art that God itself created and God resides within this body. So when we look at the, at the act of fasting or juice feasting or deciding to, okay, I'm going to clean house. It's not from a place of, oh, it's an obligation because I'm like sick and I got to become healthy. It's to look at yourself in the mirror and realize that you are a piece of art, that you've been given a gift, that this is God. This is God. This is a temple. And so it actually becomes an act of devotion. Like, I am responsible for this temple. And then what does that mean? How does that look? Are you going to let any, any person from the street walk into your temple with muddy shoes? Probably not. Every temple that you go to, they ask you to leave the shoes at the entrance. You don't even walk in with shoes because the temple is a holy place. And and it's so interesting how, you know, we're talking about the temple and this path of a solid food vacation and taking a nothing but pure, organic, beautiful juices. Um, many of the ancient healers use different modalities of fasting maybe it be water fasting it is a path of initiation and to go through this to clean the temple so that you're not allowing the dirt to come in you're freeing up a lot of energy that's going to come out i mean it's not just going to be the physical junk that you're releasing but also what that physical junk is um, hiding and we you know we talked about the parasites earlier um, but there's going to be so much emotion and you're going to face your shadow in this process. So part of what um, I really wanted to get across is, is the shadow work involved in a solid food vacation. What kind of things have you noticed in clients you've worked with as far as that them facing their own shadow and what kind of changes have you seen or is there anything else regarding the shadow that you'd like to to bring up about this oh it's it's part it's just a natural process it's a natural thing that happens when you start cleaning house in order to become lighter in order to really liberate yourself from the baggage we gotta encounter it along the way so this is where the shadow that you're speaking of is coming, that 
I cannot free myself if I don't know that something is inside of me weighing me down. And so when you start lightening the load, doing a juice feast, let's just focus on the juice feasting right now in the self vacation, then it's inevitable that you're going to start encountering all that is living inside of you physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. It's an, it just happens just like the shit that comes out or whatever comes out the other end that you just, you, you're going to see it mm-hmm. and you're going to be amazed and mortified sometimes to like, Oh my God, this has been living inside of me. So same thing is going to happen mentally and emotionally. And there's a correlation when a client tells me like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like either depressed and whatever the emotion, the emotional state that that particular person is bound into, you know, for some people, it's more like the fear for some people, it's the anger for some people, it's the depression for some people, it's uh, the sadness or the anxiety. Every person has like, depending on the weakness, right. And the endocrine system as well that they're going to be more prone to a particular emotional state. But every time they really get into, it can be a day or several days of, I'm feeling super angry or I'm feeling super irritable or I'm feeling super anxious or I'm feeling super depressed. Like a lot of emotions come up to the surface. And I always tell them, just wait, because you're going to have a big release in a couple of days. And it's either mucoid plaque or parasites or something and it usually is accompanied by, it can be crying or can be some sort of a, of a breakdown emotionally that leads to some sort of a breakthrough. And so the, whatever the shadow is, is going to bring itself up to the surface so you can actually see it. I, had, I remember one of my yoga teachers way, way, way back when I started my, my teaching, he would always say in class, and that just stuck with me, in order to heal, we got to feel. Yeah. And, and you know this, Patty, working with the clients as well, like even on a physical level, right? When we look at, at healing events, that if you have some sort of a symptom or some sort of a issue that has been suppressed because of antibiotics or, or medications or whatever it is that you've suppressed on a physical level, when you start detoxing, when you start cleansing, a healing event is going to bring that pain back up. It's going to pr- bring that issue back up. But that's just because it's going through its healing stages. So same thing applies to our unconscious emotions, traumas, beliefs, all that we classify as shadow. What is shadow? Is basically just whatever has been left in the dark. True, yeah. And so we bring in the light with the fruits, with the juices, with just taking off all the obstructions. So we make room for the light to come in and shed light on what has been, in, has been living in the dark. That, yeah, that, I mean, that is what shadow work is. It, it's, it's, it's placing the light on that hidden aspect that is suppressing your ability to be truly human because are we truly human if we don't know all aspects of who we really are and how can you have free will if something's controlling you in those deep crevices you know what something's controlling what you're addicted to as far as well people can be addicted to anything but like you said earlier food is probably what most people are addicted to and it's for many I know in the circles you and I are in, it's the last addiction people have to get through because, you know, I've worked with clients that have been alcoholics and addicted to drugs and addicted to, you know, I mean, many people today are addicted to their, their devices, you know, their cell phones. Um, But the food is the one that's the, the, the toughest and it, in eating food that is not meant for the human body, you're not facing your shadow. You're not allowing that to come up to the surface. You have to take a break from it. You have to take a break from these practices that are diverting energy away from your ability to face your shadow. 100%. If you truly want to be free, 
yeah. yeah, it's it's a must. It's it really is a must. But you can't really half ass freedom. You're either free or you're not. You're either free or you're not. It's just like you can be naked and wear clothes at the same time. Good point. <laughs> You're either naked or you have clothes on. Now you can, there's, there are various degrees. You can go back, go all the way down and just wear underwear or just wear socks, but you're not naked. You still wear, you're wearing underwear, right? So there's like various degrees. You can have like tons of layers on you and then you start stripping down the layers, but then you're just standing there with socks and, and underwear. It's like, well, you're still not fully naked though. So it's the same thing with freedom. And I'm not saying, I'm not sitting here in a position so I'm like, oh my God, I'm like fully liberated. But I'm saying it because I know, I know, I, I know the, the path. I, I see the addictions, I see the attachments and I'm saying it with compassion because we have certain addictions and attachments because we have some sort of trauma. We have some sort of stored in our cellular memory traumas that are still keeping us attached and addicted let's just say attached to certain things and food is a big one because food acts as a nervous system regulator even the act of chewing itself the way it moves the jaw the way it moves the vagus nerves nerve actually brings about this sense of relaxation and that's one of the reasons people go to food is just like the act of chewing calms down the nervous system. So we got to look at the nervous system. And that's why, you know, working with clients and doing this process, it's not just about what juices to drink and how much to drink. It's like, let's look at your emotional state. Let's look at your unresolved traumas and your lifestyle that is actually causing your nervous system to constantly, constantly be st stimulated. Your nervous system is constantly on this on edge yeah. and so when that is when that's the case then of course the food attachments are going to have a strong grip or the, the the screens or the the sex or the relationships or whatever it is that that us humans turn to in order to relax and bring the nervous system back down to a regulated state. And I, and I like how you said whatever we turn to, because whenever we're turning to something, we're turning away from what we need to look at within ourselves, which is, you know, the, what is that deep, core, painful um, problem inside of us that keeps us addicted, that keeps us in a state of dis-ease or, you know, sub-optimal health. Because that's what traps us here. That's what keeps us from being truly free and being able to live the kind of life where we are truly liberated. I mean, I, like you, speak this from a vantage point where I know I'm not there as well. You know, I know I have hurdles to get through. I mean, I still work a job, you know, at a college where I, you know, I'm teaching free allopathic students through and like, what is at keeping me attached to that. Um, you know, one of the things you and I were talking about in times past was this book. Um, I don't know, this is probably coming yeah, in. The, yeah, yeah, this is good. The Essene Gospel of Peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I think, one of those books many people um, in, I know, who we, who we uh, know have mentioned that this is the book that started it all for them you know this is the book that many people after reading it realize you know what is man's true food what is the true path to healing i read this book i guess it, it's been maybe 15 years or so when i first read it it was when i was coming back to well i had already left medicine i was teaching but when i was in medical school i you know did um, work with a medical doctor, Dr. Joel Furman, who you know, was practicing uh, water fasting to help his patients heal. And I embarked on my own 26 day water fast. And I just remember how powerful that experience was, but I didn't have the container for it back then because I was in my you know mid twenties and 
I didn't have the ability to spiritually connect it to something greater than myself. I just thought, wow, I feel a lot better. I felt lighter. I felt like, and then I saw the people healing at his facility, right? I saw people, you know, cure themselves of what they were um, diagnosed with. They left that facility with diseases that were no longer. And it was just like, I was so excited to see nature healing. I was so excited to see that something could be done where drugs and surgery were not what was fixing this person, but it was actually a state of health that was so deep that it not only cured that person's ailment, but everything else in their body, you know? So I felt that purity. And it wasn't until about 10 years later after that experience that um, coming across this book and I read it and I'm like, wow, this is what Jesus spoke of. Um, and this is the true path to getting rid of the demons, getting rid of um, the parasites that infiltrate and plaque on not only our intestinal tract, which is our root system, which is the, you know, just like a plant absorbs nutrition through their roots, our intestines is where we absorb nutrition. And if that is caked on, there's, there's no way you can get the, the optimal energy coming into your body. So um, just reading this, it inspired me to find that path and it took a while and I'm still on that path. I'm still trying to, you know, align with a pure diet because I too have addictions, you know, there are, you know, times when I want the cooked food, but, you know, with every passing year that I stick with this lifestyle, it becomes easier because you start shedding things and then you no longer want, you know, the animal products, you know, and I know for when I was leaving animal products, dairy was the last one that was the hardest for me to, to let go of. But then after a while, dairy is no longer an issue. Animal products aren't an issue. I'm not even attracted to that at all. But then, you know, there's the cooked foods. And why are cooked foods not optimal? Well, I mean, this book explains it a little bit about, you know, um, the heating of the food. You know, it, we know scientifically that it denatures the proteins. It creates abnormal shapes of molecules that our digestive enzymes cannot break down and therefore we cannot absorb. Um, so, and those things get trapped in the colon and in the intestines, and that becomes the mucoid plaque that gets stuck there and it, it inhibits absorption. It answered a lot of questions and it connected me to something more spiritual because it helped me realize that, um, we really have everything we need on this planet to experience joy and connection and love which I think is the true state of what it means to be human. So coming back to something more simple, coming back to something that aligns us to something bigger than who we are, because this is a spiritual path. It's bigger than who I am. And it's, it's the path of, of true liberation as we're talking about right now. So, I mean, I'd like to know in how this book has impacted your ability to become a healer. I just love what you shared, Patty, and I resonate with what you're saying so, so, so deeply. I, so I've been on this path for many, many, many years, just many, many, many years. And of course, it's a process, like you're saying. It's, um, it's a process. We're all going to have a different journey with it, uh, letting go of these attachments. It happens naturally as we lighten the load as ultimately comes down to love so the more we love ourselves it's a path of just loving the self it's as simple as that so the more we love ourselves the more we naturally make choices that demonstrate that love it's really not about the food that you put in your mouth it's how it's your relationship with yourself when you realize what this self in capital s means and then it's the process of embodying that love in which the choices just naturally become supportive to the self in every single way. So you don't want the animal products. You don't want the things that pollute your body. 
whatever it may be. And it's not just the food, it's the relationships, it's, it's everything. So the book, The Essene Gospel of Peace, was brought into my attention via a really beautiful soul on this planet. And uh, he, he had his YouTube videos. He's the one, because I got into the living foods back in 2009. It just like made sense to me. Yeah, why do we cook our food? We are the only species. The only species. I mean, it is really just forget about science for a second. Just look around. Just just what makes sense. Like we are the only species that cook our food. Right. And heat destroys things. That's just a fact. Like put your hand in a boiling pot of water and leave it there. Just leave your hand in a boiling pot of water and take it out after an hour. I want to see the shape of your hand, if it's still alive and vital. Mm -hmm. And it's simple as that. And that, that's what you ingest. You ingest death, basically. So in order to produce life, we got to put life in. And life is all around us, in the sun, in the air, in the oceans, in, in nature. Life, 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 life. And the more you ingest that, the more alive you're going to feel. And that is the fountain of youth. That is the, the place of immortality. And, and that's where the fruits come in, in the living foods. Like the fruits are the, the, the dense form of light, basically. It's the closest to light that we can get in a dense form. It, it is. The that is. Plant. Exactly. It's filled with water. It's filled with light. It's filled with electricity. It's filled with life force. Mm -hmm. So that just made sense to me living food. So I got into that. And then that, that person got me into juicing. He introduced me into juicing because I was deep into the fruits. I, I, I've, I've always been, I've always been a fruit lover, always. And so I got into the fruits that just made sense to me. And then I got into the juicing and that opened up a, a whole new door. And that person talked about the Essene gospel of peace. And he actually said that that book changed his life. He was an alcoholic. He was homeless. He was a drug addict. He was like everything under the sun that you can imagine that a person can endure on the dark side. And he read that book in his 20s and then stopped everything overnight and got into the living foods, got into the cleansing. And of course, you know, it's been, it's been a process, but he kept talking about the Essene gospel of peace. And that seed was planted in my head. I didn't read it right away. It was years and years later. And that was five years ago that I read. I actually got the Essenes Gospel of Peace. And I was crying the whole time I was reading it. That is... Because I just felt that truth in my heart. Yeah. Like this, is, this is, they talk about um, the elements of nature and they refer to it as the angels. Yeah. So the angel of air, the angel of sunlight, the angel of water, and the angel of earth. And I felt, I mean, it spoke so deeply into my heart that I, I yeah, I just, I just kept crying because I, I knew like this is, this is the way to live in simplicity and in joy and in love. And it's almost as if once you find this you realize what you had been deprived of and what you had been missing this whole time correct I felt yeah that and too. It, it was kind of like this this after reading that book and having it make sense to me I thought why is our world so messed up why aren't we living this way and we veered away from our natural state to such a degree that we are experiencing disease. It's, we got to go to the cause because what's been, been happening on the planet, just like people address their own physical body, is just taking care of symptoms. The pollution is a symptom. The abuse all over the planet is a symptom. The corruption is a, is a, is a, is a symptom. The greed is a symptom. We, I, I, I go down the list. And everything is a symptom of something deeper and unless we go to the root and ad address the deeper the issue will continue to manifest the macrocosm is just a reflection of the microcosm 
And so when, when, when you address the body and going, going back to the fasting, going back to the choose feasting and all the, 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 the herbs and the, the means that we utilize in order to purify the body, in order to, in order to purify the, the vessel, not just the body, but the mind, the, the emotions. Because again, what is the root cause of even physical manifestations? Like when you look at diseases, because that's another thing as, 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 uh, as healers or what it is that we focus on. And regener regeneration, it's not just about even health, it's regeneration. It's again, waking up your, your light DNA, your human potential. So if that's the gig, if that's the case, then the physical is the last manifestation, the root cause actually of many issues and many diseases, if not all of them, is actually much more than just the physical. It's even much more than the food that you eat, but it's the belief systems that you hold regarding right. yourself. That's, that is like, I think that's at the core of the belief systems. You yes. Know, part of this shadow work that the cleansing, you know, pulling the layers away like an onion, you get to what are your belief systems? That's what's really holding your back, you back in life and in your you know, path of greatness of doing your great work on this planet, because many people don't even know what their great work is. They just want to be, you know, cogs in the machine. And to each their own, <laughs> everyone has a different uh, soul's journey. And ultimately, if it's not in this life, then it will be next life or maybe a thousand lives from now that that particular soul is going to be liberated. What are we talking about too, Patty? Uh, excava excavating all this shadow, purifying to the levels that we are speaking of. That uh, you, both you and I, I'm not. This is not a diet for me. You and I are into this this depth and ultimately liberation. Not everybody has signed up for that in this life, and I I get that. And if somebody just wants to feel better, and then I know how to do that. I know I, I can give them the tips. I can give them the tools and like, okay, this is how you can at least clean your body to a certain degree that at least is going to alleviate some of the discomfort that you are feeling right now. And maybe 10 years from now, they'll be ready to dig a little bit deeper and look at some of the unresolved trauma that is, is sitting in their heart and not allowing them to actually experience the joy and the love and the, the greatness that this life has to offer them. Since this presentation or this, this conference is about liberation, it's about sovereignty, then this is what we bring to the table. Like you cannot be sovereign if you're still addicted and attached and have microorganisms in your body that control the way you think, the way you feel, and the food that you put in your body. The, and sovereignty is just no matter how much you claim to be sovereign, you're not. You're not. If your body is not clean, you and you're not even aware of what's living in your body, you're not sovereign. That is so true, and and so many. I mean, I know for myself, there there's something you know I that I've I've witnessed in myself because you know I'm not perfect, and it took me a while to get to the point where I'm now liberating you know the the years of junk that I have put into my body. You know, it's it's coming out. And I've been doing this, and I say recently, it's been over the past 10, 15 years, right? It's not really that recent, but, you know, I'm in my 50s now, so it's like I've lived a long life. I've had a chance to accumulate a lot of stuff in my body. And, um, and I've noticed that many people, like in my 9 to 5 job in academia, they're all in their head. Everybody's in their head where it's like, okay, as long as I know this and I'm okay with it but they're not experiencing it. They're not going into the depths of actually feeling it. And that's, that's where we have to respect the body enough to cleanse it. Because you can sit there and just eat all of the chips and the animal products and the grains and just keep shoveling it in um, to appease a hunger, which is never a true hunger as we both know. It's just kind of this uneasiness you feel when you feel like your stomach has shrunk a little bit and you want to stretch it out so that it doesn't feel shrunken, but you have to do, and that's what the great work is. It's doing 
the inner work, the inner standing of who you are as a human being. And, um, and opening that doorway will take you places that will put you on a whole new path. It's exciting. I think it's, it's really um, amazing to find out who you really are and to see those, those hidden aspects of yourself for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And the key though, to get to that kingdom, the key is what you're talking about is to, to say, okay, I'm going to go in. You have the key. You are the key. When I say you, I'm, I'm speaking to everyone that is listening. You are the key to your own kingdom. And, oh, and, queendom. <laughs> and that's the thing. Everybody thinks the solution is outside of them. Everybody wants to, and they want to blame someone else. You know, we want to blame the government, which yes, government does mean mind control and they're here to enslave us. I get but that. But that's a symptom, but that's a symptom too. Why do we have governments like that in place? If we talk, if we, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what if we go back to the self-responsibility piece, everything is a reflection. Everything is a reflection. So the question to ask ourselves is how come governments, such the ones that we see in place, are in place? Right. What is it inside of me? Every single one of us that is still something in my consciousness. It's not pointing fingers. It's not blaming. It's not shaming. It's not judgment. What is it inside of me energetically in my consciousness that actually allows governments such as the ones that we see in place to be in place? It's taking that self-responsibility. We each, exactly. every one of us are responsible for government existing, for mind control existing. Um, you know, human we got to bring the power back into our hands. That's true. So true. And I think that's the, the hidden key is that, you know, when we find who we are, we, we do the, the work of detoxifying the body, just removing the junk, removing that, which should not be inside of us. Um, we do uncover a power that is a realization really that we are here to experience joy and to um, not necessarily just being controlled by these other entities. It's in order to shift the manif external manifestation, we got to go to the core cause of what is producing this particular manifestation. So something about humanity feels as if we need a government. Something, you know, it's all been messed up. It's, it's just, I mean, we've allowed it to be degraded to such an extent that we're, we're living in, in just more severe type of, um, restrictions than ever before again it's just a manifestation of of human consciousness and how much people have suppressed themselves and restricted themselves and people live in a prison without knowing that they are slaves without knowing that they are prisoners and so you see that manifesting in the world bottom line is that our true nature is pure and that because we veered away from the true nature of who we are, our existence, the way we live. Now we see all these things in place because a pure human that has a pure blood and a pure body has a pure mind too, pure thoughts. So things like respect, honor, love, corroboration is a natural byproduct of a pure human, a divine human. These are not things that we need to learn. We don't need rules. We don't need all kind of, you know, this is how it has to be. And if not, then you're going to be punished and go to jail. No, people are not going to be abusive. People are not going to steal. People are not going to rape. People are not going to hit each other. No. There's just going to be a natural, natural, natural law. 
if we lived by natural law, we wouldn't need man-made laws. It's that simple. Yes. So again, going back to the cause, just one plus one equals two. No, well, we veered so much away from the natural laws, and now we on the other side of that steeped in just man-made laws that are just suppressing, oppressing, and making things worse and worse and worse. So the answer is, okay, just like with, with the detoxification process, how do we start healing the body is just pure, simple chemistry. You go from acid, you got to shift back to alkaline. So in order to bring back the state of natural, uh, the na natural human and our natural state and harmony and peace, then we got to change the chemistry. You got to come back to, to uh, the way we, we, we used to live, like the Essenes, natural laws. And then we wouldn't need all the other stuff that are just weighing us down. Because we're not living in accordance to natural law, and we, many people are just agreeing to these man's laws, it's almost like it's a reflection of the fact that humans do not love themselves. Because we lack the self-love, because we lack yes. that, that self-respect, um, we're allowing governments to exist. And I think this is the inner work humanity needs to do so that we can break free of that description of where we currently are. Because having governments is just, you know, confirmation that we are a self-loathing species, right? Because if we are allowing this government to exist, there must be something we don't like about ourselves that we're not facing and we're allowing this abuse because government is abusive, it's slavery. So I think that, you know, the message we're putting forth is that to truly know why we are so hateful of who we are as a core, you know, what is it about us that we just dislike so much that we are just abusing ourselves with, you know, these various things in our environment and we're not doing what can bring us so much pure joy. I think that's really at the heart of, you know, why fasting and cleansing and regenerative healing, why it's so important because it brings us that much closer to uncovering the shadow and seeing the pure essence of who we are as humans and what our potential is. You just summed it up perfectly, Patty. It boils down to this self-love, but again, it's so much bigger than this like trendy thing we see on Instagram when it comes to self-love. It, it really is this understanding of number one, what the self is. I mentioned that earlier, that when you realize, wow, this is a manifestation of God in a physical form. And what you said is very profound of how governments and other oppressive forms out there is just a manifestation showing us the abuse the abuse that we inflict upon ourselves mm -hmm. because every time that we pollute our body we abuse ourselves mm -hmm. and so there's ignorance around what is the true food for humans and so every time you put something that is not is abusive to your body just just let's face it from an objective truth perspective or putting something into the vehicle that is not meant to be there that is going to cause discomfort that is going to cause overtaxing or overwork or overstimulation or anything that is not honoring to a particular environment is an abuse it is yeah it's so true. And it's it, to some degree, we abandoning ourselves when we don't love ourselves enough, when we don't listen. So this is the work. This is the deep, profound work that you're speaking of. It's coming back to the self, coming back home, coming back to the temple mm -hmm. and realizing what this is and loving it enough to make the choices that honor it, that demonstrate that love. And then, and then the manifestation out there, what we see as governments and everything else that is just a symptom is going to dissipate. Just like in detoxification process, it happens, right? We see it every day. It's so true. And, and sometimes we don't realize how powerful we are each 
in every human that if we heal ourselves, we are healing the outer reflection of what we see in our world. And governments will start to dissipate or at least change in such a way that they're not so overly oppressive. Um, but yeah, you're correct. I mean, it does come down to what is the perfect food for humanity? Um, you know, as long as we need to eat something, what is it that is ideal for us to eat? <laughs> you know, because ideally, I think, you know, maybe we don't do not need food, but that's a whole another topic. <laughs> um, right. But yeah, fruit and, you know, the soft leafy green vegetables, the young leafy green vegetables, that's pure nourishment for the human body. Um, it's and the and the fruit it is a, is of itself just a gift from the plant. It's optimally packaged with everything that we could ever need to, you know, distribute to ourselves and uh, help us produce energy and and build muscle and build organs and hormones and everything our body needs to create. It's it's in fruit, and a good way to get the fruit in is through juicing because it removes the insoluble fiber and it minimizes the energetic demands of our body and it allows our body to do other things that are more meaningful. We veered away so much, like the, the state of the human, of most human bodies and, and the, the shape of the GI tract is in such dire state mm -hmm. that in this day and age, we must utilize some technologies like juicers, blenders, um, uh, colonics, like all the things that help us to cleanse the body. It's just a mean to an end. It's just like, you know, you, you touched briefly on what is the truth, right? That we are light beings that ultimately we don't need physical food. We really don't. But there are steps to get there. It's not that you can go, I mean, some people do because it can be just an awakening of overnight, really. And some people do have that. But for most people, most humans, it's a journey to go from where you are right now, especially if you're eating very dense food and stimulants and all of that to like, I don't need any food. Right? It's like, so it's a process. And so all those things that we're speaking of, including the fruits, the living foods, the fruits, these are tools that you, we use to bring us back to our natural state. And so a juicer comes in and just help us in that process. The juices bring in the hydration. And like Patty, you already mentioned that they take away, they take out the digestion process that requires so much energy. They hydrate on a deep cellular level. Water doesn't do that. It's H3O is found in fruits. And then the juices come in in a more concentrated way to help flush out the obstructions, to hydrate, not just on a cellular level, but hydrate the fecal matter, the stored old fecal matter in the colon so you can poop it out that you can let go of that it just makes me think when you're talking i'm thinking of this book you know of what yes about when when jesus or when they talk about you know um the various practices of healing and the people that are sick and diseased and they're coming to jesus and they're asking him to please heal me and you know i mean it's it's a book worthwhile and reading it, I think, will change many people's lives, for those of you watching this. Um, but you're right, the, the, the juices, they when we take them in, you know, and there are different types of juices people can drink, but, you know, like you have the citrus juices, which are very astringent, and they're pulling against the colon wall and breaking free that mucoid plaque, the years and years and years of accumulation that have set in the uh, spaces of the colon preventing absorption, making people constipated. And, you know, these are things that people experience all of the time, but we just consider it, you know, oh, this is normal. You know, people get bloated, people have, you know, heartburn because it's just every day, but it's not every day. This should not be occurring in the, in the human body. The juices come in various forms, but they just help the colon release something that you're not going to release with a water fast. I mean, I know with, with my 26 day water fast, um, I, w I was constipated for most of it. 
And I, I remember needing an enema and I had never done an enema before. And Dr. Furman hands me this enema bag. I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? And so um, he's like, you need to poop. And, and it, but with juicing, I'm, I'm on day six of a juice cleanse right now and things are just going through me and I'm just taking in liquids and it's amazing because I, I knew I needed this so desperately because it's been a, a pretty rough year in my life with the loss of my dog recently. And, um, you know, and I just, I'm so glad now I have the time to prepare the juices and to give my body this this much needed removal of toxicity, but it is powerful. Everybody does need to experience it. In ancient civilizations that were still in physical bodies, they all knew what this body was. And that was the premise of their teachings. It's in all the scriptures. They knew the power of the sun. They knew the power of breath. They knew the power of water and the power of the earth wow. and how to combine all those elements in order to bring about and manifest the true human potential. It's amazing that we're on this earth and we have everything we need. And yet people are brainwashed to think we have to go through all of these hoops to get somewhere where we're already where we need to be. Isn't that just, it's, it's such a mind. <laughs> it's well, like and it, 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 and it goes exactly, it ties into what we just said uh, a little bit ago. The key is you. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven is within you and you are the key. Yes. You're already sitting in the very temple that you were meant to inhibit And it's in your body. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. The key is you. And the human body is such a divine entity. Each and every one of us that has a human body, we don't understand. I mean, some people understand just how amazing it is to be living in this, in this form where we have sensory receptors and we can feel and we can see color and we can hear beautiful music. And, you know, we can lay in the grass and just feel the blades of grass against our skin and, and the warmth of the sun in our body. Those are just such magical experiences and, and how simple healing really is. You know, we, we're just, brainwashed to think we have to go to the doctor we have to get an injection to stay safe we have to even take you know a supplement because we're all deficient it's 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 such hog lies that we're just being you know i mean and that's that's the human experience i mean i guess part of our experience on this planet is to realize just how beautiful we are is to is to find that mirror and and look at ourselves and say I don't need anything out here. It's just all within, like we've been talking about. So simple. It is. So, so simple.